good morning let us come back to our previous discussion the last of the protein synthesis inhibitors macrolides the term macrolide means a multi-membered lactone ring structure in which one or more deoxy sugar molecules are attached the prototype macrolide is erythromycin which has a 14 member lactone ring attached with two deoxy sugar moieties and is derived from streptomyces erythraeus beside this there are some other drugs like roxithromycin clarithromycin azithromycin and fidaxomycin fidaxomycin it needs a little bit of introduction it's a narrow spectrum macrolide which is minimally absorbed on oral administration it inhibits bacterial RNA polymerase and is bactericidal in nature. Rest of the macrolides are basically static in nature in normal therapeutic concentration. But in more than therapeutic concentration, but it is within tolerable limit, it can be useful as a sidle preparation. Macrolides are derived from Streptomyces erythraeus and it was discovered by McGurr and its co workers in 1952. Later on, Clarithromycin, Azithromycin, and Roxithromycin developed with its derivatives of Erythromycin in a slightly modified spectrum of antibacterial activity. Fidaxomycin is not only having bactericidal activity but it is also a kind of semi-synthetic macrolide. Beside these macrolides there are some uh, lincosamides. Lincosamides are lincomycin and clindamycin they are almost having similar kind of mechanism of action but they are belonging to different groups similarly we are getting one ketolide known as terindromycin this telithromycin is the first ketolide antibiotic related to erythromycin with similar antibacterial spectrum and it is effective against macrolide resistant pneumococci. So, from the first slide, we know there are groups like macrolides, ketolide and lincosamide. There is a group, last group of protein synthesis inhibitor that is macrolide. And macrolide consists of erythromycin, roxithromycin, azithromycin, clarithromycin, and fidaxomycin. Next slide, please. The mechanism of macrolides is based on its inhibitory property on the protein synthesis by binding reversibly to peptidyl site of 50S ribosomal subunit of the bacteria. Precisely, these drugs inhibit the translocation step, wherein this tRNA with its growing peptide chain is translocated, that means shifted from the acceptor site to the peptidyl site. As a result, the ribosome cannot move on one codon further towards right and it is relative to mRNA. In other words, acceptor site does not become free to accept the next incoming tRNA charged with desired amino acid. The protein synthesis hence stops and macrolides do not inhibit the 60S or 40s ribosomal unit of the mammalian cells hence these drugs 
are not permeate through mitochondrial membrane of the host cells and therefore the chance of toxicity is far lesser in comparison to any other antibiotic in case of macrolides. So it's a comparatively safe group of antibiotic which we can use as a first line drug in different situations or as an alternative to beta lactam antibiotic. Antimicrobial activity of macrolides is enhanced by alkaline pH because these are weakly basic drugs and increased pH results in more of the ionized form of the drug for penetration into the bacterial cell. These drugs are effective against aerobic gram-positive cocci that includes streptococcus pyogenes, streptococcus pneumonia, streptococcus viridens, usually with a minimum inhibitory concentration of around 0.015 to 2 microgram per ml in the plasma. Staphylococci, hemophilus influenzae, Neisseria meningitis, Neisseria uh, gonorrhea are moderately sensitive to this macrolide. The gram positive bacilli that are sensitive to macrolides include Clostridium, Perfringens, Cornibacterium diphtheri, and Lyseria monocytogens. Other organisms which are sensitive to erythromycin are Mycoplasma pneumoniae, Legionella pneumophilia, Chlamydia, Rickettsia. But obviously, the action of clarithromycin and azithromycin is better on these kind of organisms. Clarithromycin is little more potent than erythromycin against sensitive strains of Streptococci and Staphylococci. It has moderate activity against Neisseria gonorrhea and Haemophilus influenzae. But clarithromycin is a drug which can be useful in peptic ulcer associated with H. pylori infection. So its effectiveness against H. pylori is unique among this group of drugs. Azithromycin is less active than erythromycin and clarithromycin against streptococci and staphylococci but it's more active against Haemophilus influenzae, Chlamydia, Mycoplasma, C. jejuni, Fusobacterium, Salmonella, that means in typhoid fever, Neisseria gonorrhea. So in all these cases, we are seeing a better role of azithromycin. Whereas roxithromycin is not a FDA approved drug. But still in India, this one is used and it has a typical pharmacokinetics that uh, its relationship with food is obvious. So you have to prescribe this uh, oxythromycin uh, formation before food. And the antibacterial activity of roxythromycin is similar to that of erythromycin. It is particularly effective against streptopneumony, streptopyogenes, Microbiosma pneumonia and the sclamidia species. Fidaxomycin, which is a bactericidal one, is active against Clostridium difficile and has no action against other organisms. It is poorly absorbed when given orally and available for oral use for therapy of Clostridium difficile infection. So, Macrolides are basically of two types, the static one and the main four drugs, erythromycin, azithromycin, clarithromycin and roxithromycin are bacteriostatic in action whereas fidoxomycin is having sidal action. Out of the first four drugs, roxithromycin is not a FDA approved drug. Hence, you will not see this name roxithromycin in Goodman Gilman. Next one please. The chance of bacterial resistance is quite common with even this drug. 
It starts with impaired permeability of the antibiotic through the bacterial cell membrane. The same mechanism of efflux of the drug by an active transport mechanism or drug vomiting is also existing in case of this drug. Protection of the ribosomal subunit against the action of macrolide by the constitutive and inducible methylase enzyme which prevent the binding of macrolide to the ribosomal subunit. This is basically the mechanism by which resistance may develop. A mutation, uh, basically the chromosomal mutation is pretty common with this group of drug consists of 50s ribosomal subunit. Formation of macrolide inactivating enzymes that is esterases produced by enterobacteria which hydrolyze macrolides are also not very uncommon. The next one please. So the group of drugs which you have to remember from the group of macrolides are erythromycin, roxithromycin, azithromycin and clarithromycin. All these four groups of drugs are basically bacteriostatic drug. Erythromycin free base is destroyed by gastric acid and therefore administered orally with an enteric coating that dissolves in duodenum. Food interferes with its absorption. Ester forms that is steroid or ethyl succinate or its ester salts like erythromycin estolate are available to overcome this problem. And this will protect it from acid degradation. Erythromycin lactobionate, the water soluble salt of the drug is available for intravenous administration. Usually intramuscular injections are extremely painful, hence all this uh, kind of uh, probable administration, route of administration is avoided in patients. Erythromycin estolate is the best absorbed oral preparation that can be taken without any regard to meals. But it has its own adverse drug reactions and that I will discuss in the later slides. Erythromycin is well distributed. It produces therapeutic concentrations in tonsillar tissues, middle ear, um, high concentration in alveolar macrophages and neutrophils. ECSF levels comes around 15 to 20% of the plasma level. It can be metabolized by liver and primarily excreted through bile and lost in feces. Whereas roxithromycin is a semi-synthetic derivative of erythromycin. It is a long-acting preparation. So the dose in case of erythromycin is 250 mg 4 times daily whereas in case of roxithromycin it is 150 mg twice daily 1 hour or half an hour before food. It is an acid stable macrolide uh, but interaction with food is common. Longer half-life makes it suitable for twice daily application. Clarithromycin is an O-methyl derivative of erythromycin. It is also an acid-stable macrolide. Food does not interfere with its oral absorption. It is longer half-life, T half of around 6 to 7 hours also permits twice daily dosing. So patient compliance is going to be better with clarithromycin. It is metabolized in liver to 14 hydroxy clarithromycin which also has good antimicrobial activity. The drug and its metabolites are excreted via kidney. Dosing adjustments are needed in patients with compromised renal functions. So this one is probably not undergoing that much in enterohepatic circulation. The last one is basically azithromycin, which is basically a fifth generation macrolide and it's more acid stable with wider tissue distribution except CSF. 
Therapeutic concentrations are achieved in lung, genital tissue, liver, prostate and also in phagocytes, so which has a clinical importance. Macrophages and fibroblast from where it is slowly released. So azithromycin is stored in phagocytes, macrophage and fibroblast from where it is slowly released and hence its elimination half-life is about 68 hours and that one daily formulation of azithromycin is basically shortening the duration of treatment for 3 to 5 days or 6 days and one daily formulation is possible because of this risk. Food interfere with its absorption and it can be taken one hour before or two hour after meals. It does not inhibit cytochrome P450 enzymes like its previous one erythromycin. So liver enzymes are unaffected with azithromycin. It is largely excreted unchanged in the bile. Renal excretion is only 5 to 10 percent and it has a significant post antibiotic effect. So this group of drugs has a significant post antibiotic effect which is not seen in case of other macrolides. So just to recapitulate few of the important uh, pharmacokinetic properties of these drugs. Erythromycin estrolate is acid stable and it is given at a dose of 250 mg 4 times daily formulation which has some kind of little bit of side effect like cholestasis which may lead to jaundice later on but it is lesser in comparison to the other preparations. It is probably the best possible oral preparations we have in our hand. Whereas erythromycin lactobionate can be given in injectable form, but ideally via intravenous route, intramuscular injection is extremely painful, hence we are avoiding this route. Clarithromycin absorbed rapidly from the GI tract, uh, but its half-life is around uh, 6 to 7 hours, hence it's one of the uh, best preparations. We have in our hand, this is given in case of community acquired pneumonia as well as um, in case of H. pylori associated peptic ulcer where other macrolide group of antibiotics are not that effective though azithromycin is uh, almost similarly work in case of uh, community acquired pneumonia. Macrolides cannot cross blood brain barrier even in meningitis and only 10 to 15 percent of its concentration reaches CSF, plasma concentration reaches CSF. Hence, we are actually avoiding these kind of formulations in meningitis. Azithromycin is found in higher concentration in phagocyte, macrophage and fibroblast. It is almost uh, the action lasts for 64 hours, uh, so this is its half-life, hence once daily formulation is good enough and it has a very good post-antibiotic effect. So azithromycin has a one of the best possible post-antibiotic effect and hence these type of antibiotics can be prescribed in case of uh, where uh, at, I mean the plasma concentration or the uh, drug is working even below MIC level. So basically the agents that show time dependent killing and having prolonged post antibiotic effects are azithromycin and clarithromycin. Now for azithromycin the duration of antibacterial exposure is important. Its clinical effectiveness is not compromised. If their concentration falls below the MIC and MBC, they poses longer and persistent post-antibiotic effect. 
Even azithromycin can be prescribed at a dose of 1 gram one daily formulation for 5 days in case of typhoid fever. Initially it was prescribed in case of nursed variety that means nalidic sick acid resistant typhoid fever variety or salmonella typhi variety but nowadays even azithromycin can be prescribed with any one of the first line drug in case of typhoid fever. So the next one please. So these are the common clinical uses of macrolide group of antibiotic as a whole. It starts with diphtheria. Though we know that diphtheria itself requires uh, antitoxin, but erythromycin is probably the most effective antibiotic in treating acute infective stage of diphtheria and for eradicating the carrier state through the course of acute infection cannot be prevented for which as I said antidiphtheritic serum must be administered. So in treatment of diphtheria should be antidiphtheritic serum and erythromycin as a first choice antibiotic 250 milligram four times a day for seven days. This group of drug erythromycin and azithromycin are your drug of choice in case of rapid control in pertussis which is caused by Bordetella pertussis and it is also used as a prophylactic agent for preventing the spread during post exposure period in the community. A 7 day treatment with erythromycin estolate is effective in most cases of pertussis. The dose is around 40 milligram per kg per day. So it is again probably coming around 250 milligram four times daily. Macrolide group can be your first choice in case of community acquired pneumonia. Usually we select one or two of the antibiotic from the main three groups. The main three groups are beta lactam group of antibiotic which includes penicillin and cephalosporin. The second group is the macrolide group of antibiotic which includes azithromycin, clarithromycin, even sometimes erythromycin. And the third group is the fluoroquinolones, uh, which includes uh, ciprofloxacin, levofloxacin, um, this kind of preparations. So most of the times if we suspect drug resistance or in case of empirical therapy, we combine any two of the groups. Chlamydial infection and STDs. So macrolides are very effective in treating those things. Uncomplicated urethral, endocervical, rectal, uh, epididymal, respiratory, neonatal, ocular chlamydial infections caused by chlamydia trachomatis can be easily controlled with this group of drug. A single dose of 1 gram azithromycin has been found to provide complete cure for urogenital chlamydial infections. Also in case of gonorrhea, it is combined with uh, safe track zone 250 milligram single dose and this combination will give you a complete cure. Azithromycin 1 gram a week for 3 weeks is highly effective in treating lymphogranuloma venereum which is basically the answer of your case study in the presentation of tetracycline and chloramphenicol. So, Doxycycline or tetracycline can be replaced with azithromycin where the, you cannot prescribe doxycycline to uh, few patients and uh, this one is having lesser toxicity. And patient compliance is also better as a single oral dose of 1 gram is highly effective in curing uh, hemophilus Dukri infection which is also known as chancroid. So again repeating pertussis, it is not only the used as a uh, treatment of cure but it is also useful as a prophylactic therapy. It can replace penicillin for the prophylaxis of infective endocarditis but if you want to add some kind of gram negative uh, 
uh, some agents which will pre uh, tackle gram negative infections it's better to add gentamicin or amikacin that means aminoglycoside group of drug in thrice daily dose regime and this type of uh, prophylactic agent is usually used during dental procedures usually two uh, two hours uh, before dental therapy or it should be continued for three days and you should after that you may go for dental extraction in case of tetanus where you don't have the option of giving penicillin due to some allergic reactions or hypersensitivity reaction you can always select macrolide group of antibiotic as a prophylaxis in case of mycobacterial infection that is disseminated macrobacterium avm complex mac disease in persons with advanced hiv infection this drug is recommended as a 1200 milligram once weekly dose this one can also be given in h pylori infection in peptic ulcer and that drug is very specific it is clarithromycin none of the other agents are that effective against h pylori infection in toxoplasmosis you can prescribe azithromycin you can prescribe it in case of pelvic inflammatory diseases and um, in case of um, clostridium difficile infection you may prescribe the drug fidaxomycin fidaxomycin is not that important from this group but it has a specific use it is having sidal action and you can prescribe this drug in case of clostridium difficile it is poorly absorbed when given orally it is usually given 200 milligram twice a day for a period of 10 days so these are little bit about the clinical uses of macrolide group of antibiotics adverse drug reactions are normally uncommon in case of uh, this group of drugs as i have mentioned they are very well tolerated and um, i mean this is extremely rare allergic reactions are always been there uh, like in case of any other drug and cholesterolic hepatitis or jaundice uh, may be seen with estolate salt uh, erythromycin estolate which is very commonly prescribed as a main salt from from that group uh, maculopapular rash urticaria fever eosinophilia pruritus may be associated with macrolide group of antibiotic in case of allergic reactions drug interactions are not uncommon with this group of drugs as they are having interference with cytochrome p450 system mediated metabolism of drugs like carbamazepine corticosteroid cyclosporine digoxin theophylline and warfarin and therefore it's raising their plasma levels that means this macrolide group of drugs are basically enzyme inhibitors these drug interactions are mainly common with erythromycin and clarithromycin because of their structural similarity drug interactions are mostly absent with erythromycin which is structurally different from rest of the antibiotics but in case of covid-19 when people prescribed hydroxychloroquine and with azithromycin they have seen this drug interaction where patient might be suffering from prolonged qt interval so you cannot tell that this one is particularly uncommon with azithromycin Telithromycin is basically the first ketolite to be approved for clinical use. It has its own spectrum. It covers streptopyogen, streptopneumonia, staph aureus, hemophilus influenzae, morexella, mycoplasma, H. pylori, 
toxoplasma only so this action is i mean the range is uh, pretty extended one like most of the macrolides it will interact with the same ribosomal protein and it's almost having similar mechanism of action many macrolide resistant strains are susceptible to ketolides why because the structural modification presence of three keto group of these compounds renders them less susceptible to the efflux pump mediated bacterial resistance tetrathromycin is indicated for the treatment of acute bacterial sinusitis acute bacterial exacerbations of chronic bronchitis and community acquired pneumonia caused by the organisms which i mentioned before the dose of tetrathromycin is around 800 mg every 24 hour for 5 days for the treatment of those conditions and it is usually continued 7 to 10 days for the treatment of community acquired pneumonia a single daily dose of tetrathromycin is possible due to its longer duration of action that was the reactions are more common with tetrathromycin is showing diarrhea nausea vomiting visual disturbances are also common like blurred vision the most common visual changes slowing of the ability to accommodate and to release accommodation exacerbations of myasthenia gravis including life threatening acute respiratory failure have been reported in patients with this disorder and who have been treated with tetrathromycin the other important adverse effects like hepatic dysfunction prolongation of qt interval and it's ultimately leading to ventricular arrhythmia inhibition of cytochrome p453a4 hepatic enzyme causing a number of drug interactions which is applied pimozide atorvastatin and other statins which are also the substrates for the metabolism of cyp3a4 and whose serum level are increased because of the interaction so this drug interaction which i forget to mention with macrolide is common except azithromycin and they are showing this interaction with the statin drugs which are basically hypolipidemic drugs in nature clindamycin which is not belonging to macrolide but it's a lincosamide group of drug and it's a derivative of lincomycin both clindamycin and lincomycin have similar kind of action like those uh macrolides they are protein synthesis inhibitors primarily a bacteriostatic one and binding to 50s r rna the spectrum of activity is little bit different uh, in comparison to um, this macrolide group they are specifically active against the anaerobic organism as well as against the gram negative aerobic organism so its spectrum on gram negative uh, organism is better than any drug from the group of macrolides it's well absorbed from the gi tract absorption is delayed but not decrease in presence of food it is widely distributed it enters most of the body compartments and achieves adequate concentration in the lungs and liver it is metabolized to the bacteriologically active uh, n methyl and sulfoxide derivatives which are excreted in the urine and bile it is clinically used in skin and soft tissue infections in case of dental infection in serious infections caused by anaerobic organisms where you cannot prescribe metronidazole you can replace metronidazole by giving clindamycin you may have heard the drug interaction between metronidazole and ethyl alcohol in those cases you can always replace metronidazole with clindamycin if the previous drug metronidazole was prescribed to tackle a dental infection or to tackle any anaerobic infection in case of serious staphylococcal or pneumococcal um, or streptococcal respiratory tract infection including aspiration pneumonia it can be useful as alternative to cotrimoxazole for moderate to severe pneumocystis zero vesi pneumonia in hiv infected patients it is given with chloroquine or and uh, is effective and well tolerated in treating malaria caused by plasmodium falciparum it can be given in a topical form uh, twice daily formulation in acne vulgaris azithromycin also can be given in 
case of acne vulgaris or pimples but it is given in the oral form the form of pulse therapy and usually uh, three days in a week is selected and every same three days uh, repeated for one to two months in case of azithromycin whereas clindamycin is given mostly in the topical form the main problem or adverse effect with clindamycin is pseudomembranous enterocolitis which is characterized by bloody diarrhea which i have discussed previously in uh, relation to the other broad spectrum antibiotics as well as in the introduction of in the antibiotics it is characterized by abdominal pain diarrhea fever mucus and blood in the stools and to treat this condition pseudomembranous enterocolitis you have to give metronidazole if metronidazole is not sufficient to tackle the situation then you have to prescribe drug like vancomycin which is basically acting on cell wall synthesis of the bacteria the next one please so like my previous slide i am also uh, presentation i am uh, ending my uh, discussion on the macrolide group of antibiotics with a clinical case study think about it uh, with a clear vision in mind and try to find out the answer on your own a person aged around 30 years consults his family physician for complaints of fever cough brownish red sputum chest discomfort feeling of exhaustiveness and dyspnea he had a history of catching cold with rhinitis and associated features 3 days earlier while on travel what could be the symptoms accounted for what would be the drugs most commonly used for his condition what are the possible complications the patient is likely to suffer from if not adequately treated and what are the common adverse drug reactions of this group of drugs so thank you very much for the last part of protein synthesis in evidence um you have hear it patiently and kindly concentrate on this case study and prepare for your exam on this topic thank you once more